everyone, Angela here. Life can be challenging. Trust me, I get it. However, I have learned we can either view the opposition or value the opportunity. Ponder on the problem or praise the potential. Focus on the situation or find the solution. Despite the current circumstances you're going through, I invite you to join me today as we embark on a grand adventure to discover the reasons why it's a good time to be you. Here's the encourager herself, making every day a good day, Angela Henderson. today. Aren't we Miss Grace? Aren't you glad to be here today? Wow. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's a good time to be you. And it is. We have an amazing story here today, but we are honored that you were with us. You know, you were at one time a great idea that became a dream come true. And now we have these few moments to participate in the amazing things that God is doing in you. So thank you for being with us. Today we have on this episode a wonderful couple, Jeremy and Lindsay Loomis, who are here to share with us the miraculous healing power of God. They have seen Him over and over many times in their lives, from an unthinkable accident to medical issues to stuff that you only see on TV. Guys, you can't make this stuff up. However, they have lived to tell about it. And so we are going to have them out here in just a few minutes and we will be right back. Are you a business owner or a professional? Do you work with a staff? You know, sometimes that can be considered an infection. (laughs) Why don't we take that group of people, that marvelous group of people, and let's turn them into a team. Let's do some personal discovery, team building, and leadership development. Reach out to me at AngelaDHenderson.com. I would love to embark on a grand adventure with you. And remember, it's a good time to be you. Welcome back, everyone. We are so glad you're here. Isn't that right, Grace? Miss Grace is here with me today, and we are going to be welcoming her owners here on the stage. You know, we all need grace in our lives. It is unmerited favor. It isn't earned, nor is it deserved. However, it's given to us just because. And so we're going to be introducing Jeremy and Lindsay Lewis here, who have walked through a lot of grace in their lifetime and have seen the miraculous healing power of God. And so without further ado, let's welcome them, Lindsay and Jeremy Lewis. Come on out. Oh, look, she stood for her owners. She knows you by name. That's pretty cool. Welcome, welcome. Here you go, my friend. Oh, she is certainly beautiful, and we are just so happy to have you guys with us, and welcome. Now, we're going to dive right into your story, because this I have found so intriguing. Now, we're going to go back in time when you guys first met this interesting love story, because um, you were actually engaged before you saw each other. So, how'd that happen? (laughs) Well, uh, we met through a mutual friend, and she had just kept trying to hook me up with different people and I was fed up and so she said well there's one more and so I said great and so um, long story short um, I sent him an email and we were pen pals for several months and uh, actually, we, we were pen pals and we used Yahoo Messenger. That was back when Yahoo, oh, Yahoo. Messenger was a thing. <laughs> Here, so. yeah. Yeah, Yahoo. All right, wonderful. Well, Jeremy, what about you? I mean, as far as from your end of the story and being introduced to Lindsay. The person that introduced us, you know, I've, I, I've known her since I was in my early 20s. So I, I really um, trusted her her way of, of thinking and, and what she thought of Lindsay and, and her opinion. And so when she said, I think you guys would be a perfect match, I, I took it for God's word that we would be. Wow. And so you just began to write. Just began to write. Just began to write. And how beautiful it is, the words. You know, it kind of reminds me of, of God's word. Um, you know, we don't see him maybe in the natural, but he has written something very beautiful to us. And the more we read it, the more we fall in love with him and who he is and what he has to offer. So um, was that a similar experience maybe as to the, pit, the words that Jeremy was pinning to you? Yes, and what was fun was that I had actually sent a picture of myself and our 
my my daughter, it's our daughter now, but he didn't actually receive that picture until... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he proposed to me first before he ever got the picture of us. And so that was funny. He didn't, because it's snail mail, because he wasn't, he wasn't stateside. He was overseas. So okay. that was the funny part of it. Wow. <laughs> well, Jeremy, what um, just prompted your heart? At what moment did you realize that um, Lindsay was the one for you? Uh, probably after about a five-hour conversation of just nonstop. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we talked for hours every day, um, either through Yahoo Messenger or every once in a while I was able to make a phone call from where we were at. And it was just the, the sound of her voice, the, the sincerity and everything that was you know, involved in it that just, it just felt right. Wow. You know, um, I told the story about uh, my husband and I and how we met. And I knew, like, on our second date that I was going to marry that man. But I didn't tell him that because I didn't want to scare him away. <laughs> <laughs> and our first date was a blind date. And he did see a picture. I did see a picture of him, but he didn't see one of me. But this is pretty amazing. Five hours of just conversation. Um, I can imagine just how wonderful that was and how the Holy Spirit definitely directed this union. And then an amazing journey began. Is that right? Yes. So I moved up to where he was stationed. I moved into his house before I actually met him. Wow. And I had actually been really ill. And so um, he came home on my birthday. That was oh. the first time we ever saw each other in person. And we were married three days later. And we've been married over 15 over years, 15 I think. Years. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 15 years. And, you know, the number 15 um, is New Direction. And so I am very certain that the path that you guys have walked on up to this point, you know, has been eventful. And now God is going to be taking you in so many different directions, new directions, because of your faithfulness, you know, in that. And in just hearing his voice, I could imagine moving into somebody's house that, you know, maybe you, you, you've never seen. <laughs> I guess stranger things have happened. But you know, for a stranger, but yet he wasn't because you were just so connected in the spirit, Yes. you know, as well as, you know, in the soul. So that is so wonderful. Well, when we come back, we're going to hear more of this amazing journey that the two of you have been on, but um, we will be right back in just a few moments. Hey everyone, Angela here, just wanting to encourage you to pick up my new book, it's a good time to be you. You can find it on AngelaDHenderson.com or Amazon.com. But this is a book that you definitely need. Let me help coach you so that you can know how to turn perils into pearls and trauma into treasures. You know, life is challenging and I kind of understand that. But in the pages of this book, you are going to realize that you are created in His image. Go figure out. Ah, oh, what about choosing joy? That should be a given. Um, Gethsemane. Mm, not too sure about that one, Angela. How about approved? That's something that we all want. From prison to palace. Let me show you how to get out of prison and live in the palace. Sounds of the season. You've got a season in your life, a great season ahead of you. Listen for the sound so you can pick up on it. The joys of the journey to somewhere. You know, it's not just the destiny, but it's the joy of the journey. Hey, how about as for me and my house? You can make that declaration and you and your family can serve the Lord. Burn the boats. Listen, if you want to take the island, you got to burn the boats. Get rid of all your excuses and learn to fly like an eagle. You want to get this book today so that you can move forward in all the things that God has for you. Don't waste another day being down and discouraged and depressed. You got to know, my friend, that it truly is a good time to be you. Welcome back, everyone. We have with us uh, Lindsay and Jeremy Loomis, and they are sharing their amazing story. Okay, so you guys, you've met, you have moved into the house, three days later you're married, and life begins, and it's just amazing and it's wonderful, no problems, right? <laughs> um, Jeremy, why don't you take us back to the accident that really began to change your life? Right, so the accident was... Uh, at least a decade before you know, Lindsay and I met. <clears throat> I was, uh, it was in 96, was deployed in Kuwait, working on top of a, an aircraft, and uh, mm. one thing led to another. There was an emergency situation. I tried to get off the aircraft, and I took an express trip off the end of the wing 
hit a stand and was thrown out in, into the sand. Um, uh, broke my back. Mm. Um, wow. But I, but I stood up. I, I, I spent four more months in country uh, working, doing wow. everything. Um, but in that accident, I guess part of a, a, a splinter from the spine punctured the fluid sac in, yeah. on my spine, and I was leaking spinal fluid. Mm. My body started overproducing to keep it regulated. Uh, I healed, but my body never quit overproducing. Yeah. And with that, I started getting migraines and headaches, and it just it got to the point to where it, they were debilitating. Uh, just every day was miserable. Wow. Um, I crashed on November twenty seventh, two thousand seven. Wow. Um, got rushed to the hospital. Was in in the ER. Uh, Doctor told Lindsay that I had a 50/50 chance of survival, 20% oh chance of coming out without any any complications. Oh wow! And uh, you know that was just a day that never goes away. Yes, I can imagine, and I can imagine that was a very scary opportunity. And a lot of times when we think that it's over and it's the beginning of the end, it's really a new beginning for us. And I love your numbers. Uh, just a few minutes ago, you mentioned a decade. And that decade we think of as a number 10, 10 years. And the number 10 represents law and order. And so then you shared with us how on November 27th, 2007, it, everything just crashed. And the month of November is a time of thankfulness, but it also represents a time of incompletion, imperfection, and some disorder. And so that number 27, the seven in it, represents the perfection of God. The number 20, we can look at that and break it down, and it represents the redemption and just kind of giving back, cashing in on promises. And so what looked like the beginning of the end for you, God was actually saying, now we're going to kind of now bring some order here. We're going to kind of make things right. We're going to do some repairing. We're going to do some restoring. So share with us, um, you know, what happened? Well, at that point, uh, the Lord had spoken to me and said, hey, um, he, you need to tell him that he's going to be given a chance to go or to stay and tell him that I'm not through with him yet and uh, to choose to stay. And so that moment, I, he became lucid for a moment because he'd been pretty incoherent and so uh, he came to for a moment, and I shared that with him. And we both got very weepy, and um, we said we loved each other. And I said, you have to fight to stay. Wow. And so they wheeled him off. And in that moment, it reminded me of a decision I had made actually 26 years ago this year uh, when I died in a car accident with my mom. Oh my and I had been given a chance to come back. And wow. so when that happened, the Lord was literally breathing his breath back into me. He said, you're mm -hmm. called to the nations. And the moment he was blowing his breath back into my body, they were actually um, putting tubes in my chest cavity in my lungs to help drain fluid and bring so I could have um, an airway that was cleared. Oh, my so. goodness. This is so amazing. Again, guys, you cannot make this stuff up. This is the miraculous work of our Father God. And the number 26 represents, as we are seeing you now, 26 years later, after what you had walked through, um, it was the righteousness of God. And it just proves that you made the right choice that day. You could have chosen to just go on, all right? But, and our days are numbered, the Lord tells us that. And the same thing with you, Jeremy, our days are numbered, God knows. The assignment that He's given us, you know, it all falls into within that number of days. He knows exactly how long it will take for us to complete our assignment here on this earth when we cooperate with Him. And for both of you to have a choice, you know, that you can come on now and be home with me, or you can remain here and finish the work that I've sent you to do. How amazing is that? And so I think you both made the right choice and our world is certainly blessed and a lot better because you're here and you're with us and um, that you are among us and the assignment that's within you that you guys are walking in today is truly making a difference. You're not just making a difference, but you're being a difference. And so in just a few minutes, you're gonna be sharing more with us about um, those moments in your life during that very pivotal time and that time of transition. But we're gonna to go to a break right now. And so please don't go away. You're gonna to wanna to stick around and hear the rest of this amazing story. And we'll be right back. 
Do you have an extraordinary story of when you discovered it was a good time to be you? I bet you do. How about send it on over to us for consideration at It's a Good Time to Be You at AngelaDHenderson.com. Wow. Welcome back. This is getting exciting, folks. I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm sitting on the edge of my seat here. Um, we have now gotten to the point where you had the choice, Jeremy, to, to go on and be with the Lord or to come back and complete and fulfill your assignment on the earth. Tell us, what was it like during those moments or hours that you were on the surgical table? What was happening in your world at that time? Uh, just being awake for the first portion of the surgery as they're, you know, drilling the hole in my skull to relieve the pressure. Um, I mean, because I was rushed in. It, it, they were, wow. they, they wanted to make sure that everything was good. I mean, they had put a, a tube all the way through my skull into my, the ventricles of my brain to relieve the pressure. And you were like and awake, pretty, aware pretty, that this was happening. Coherent. Oh my goodness. Um, and it was... When they were when they were done with that portion, they were, I guess, to put me fully under for the rest of the general surgery, as they called it. Um, they put me under too far. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I just remember them talking, and then the next thing I know, I, I'm literally looking at my doctor and the nurses kind of walking around the table, and I realize that's me on the table. So it was in a, in like halo you're, you and were uplifted. Oh, and uh, I was just listening to him talk, and, and then the next thing, I just kind of lifted my head, and I'm looking at the waiting room, and I see Lindsay in there, just kind of sitting there. My my mother is to her right, holding our youngest daughter. Um, my my commander and first sergeant were in in, in the waiting room. And walking around, my best friend Steve was there, you know, and his wife were all there just helping Lindsay. Um, at that point, I just kind of, I felt this ease to, to know that there was people there helping her, mm -hmm. that she wasn't just in the waiting room by herself, yeah. you know, wondering. Um, I kind of turned around, I guess, and I'm standing there and I'm looking at a little eight-year-old-ish, blonde hair, blue-eyed boy. Wow. And uh, he just kind of takes my hand and we're walking. And it just felt like we were talking forever. It just, I felt as if I knew him at a very intimate level. Yeah. And uh, we, came, I came, we came up to these three guys standing there and it felt like the four of us, um, well, the three guys and the kid and me, so the five of us, I guess, wow. were just in this deep conversation. And uh, it felt like an eternity. And then I turned and looked at the little boy, and he says, Art, well, are you ready to go? And I just kind of shook my head, and I said, no, I don't think so. And he's like, okay. And he just kind of walked off, and I turned, and there was nobody around. Um, but then I remember just at that point waking up from the surgery, um, in, well, I'm still in the surgery room, and my eyes were taped shut, and I had a mask on my face, you know, the oxygen mask, and I felt like I was screaming at the top of my lungs, and uh, I just I didn't know what was going on. And uh, next thing I know, I'm in the recovery room, and I'm doing the same thing, but I guess at that point, I physically was screaming because yeah. Lindsay said that she could hear me in, in the recovery room uh -huh. waiting area. And uh, they, I guess, sedated me enough to let me come out slowly. I don't know if I came up too fast or what happened, but um, it was just such a rapid change in my entire life. Okay, I've got chills right now. <laughs> this is so amazing. Um, Lindsay, just really, really quick. Um, what was happening in the waiting room, um, you know, just during that time as he was describing those scenes? Can you attest that th this was normal, what yeah, was happening? Yeah, years later, he could tell me where we all were positioned, and his commander was a great man of God, and he was actually praying for me in that time period because oh. I had no idea what was going on mm -hmm. in uh, the OR. Wow. So, Jeremy, what was the prognosis then um, from, you know, the medical team that worked with you concerning what the results 
results or the outcome, what your outcome was supposed to be? Well, due to the damage that I'd had from that major accident and other vehicle accident I had while I was in the military, they told me that the propagation of damage, I would eventually be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Oh my goodness. Um, I did spend almost five years in a wheelchair. Wow. But today is almost three years out of it. Three years out of it. Oh my goodness, isn't that amazing? <laughs> Yes, and the number three is just divine unity. You know, what God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit said would be, it yeah, is. Maybe. And it is so amazing to see you here um, today walking in just the, the miraculous healing power of God. And so we're getting ready to go back to another break, but um, definitely you guys don't go anywhere. They still have a little bit more to share as if this wasn't interesting enough. Um, so we'll be right back in just a few. Thank you for being with us today and for just being a part um, of Lindsay and Jeremy's continuation of their story. And we are going to now bring us up into today's time as to what you're doing now and just the great things that are happening in and through you. So Jeremy, I believe you have a ministry now? Uh, I have been working on getting mine pretty much off the ground, uh, truly trying to figure out what the end goal is um, I, I work with people with uh, service dogs uh, and because I have one and, and I've seen mm. the great leaps and bounds that, that the dogs do for, for veterans. Yes. Um, I, I enjoy talking to veterans, you know, teaching and, and spreading the power, the healing power of God, mm -hmm. um, you know, beyond the miracles that I've, I've had in my life, just recognizing the ones in theirs. Yes. Um, I, I completely deplore the, the 22 lives a day that our veterans take. Yes. Um, I, I want that number down to zero, you yes. know? Um, so eventually in, in, in it's God's timing, but I want it, to, <laughs> obviously I want it now, but yes. I, I want to be able to talk to every veteran and, and give them that, that hope that, I've seen manifest in my life over the last 15 years. Amazing. Well, Jeremy, you certainly are an inspiration to us for sure. And again, that number 15 being the new direction here, I really see that happening for you. And I see plenty of doors opening so that you can go and be that light and be that encouragement and be that hope to those veterans that feel hopeless and like whatever the doctors have said or whatever the professionals have said about their life and whatever's been spoken over them, you can go in and you can cancel that with the truth of what God says. And um, so thank you. Thank you for who you are and for coming back you know, to be a part of all of our lives. Absolutely. Lindsay, what about you? Share with us the amazing things that you're doing now with the veterans. Well, uh, back in 2018, Senator Elizabeth Dole selected me to represent South Carolina for a two-year term advocating for veterans and their caregivers. As I was a caregiver for years for him, and now he's doing really well. And so that opened up a door into government, uh, which was a passion of mine for years. Mm -hmm. And so now I bring what was the original intent, whole complete original intent for a nation and its citizens mm -hmm. uh, through my business so that is wonderful wonderful awesome and you know God knew what he was doing just through those written letters you know think about that 15 years ago those written letters just going back and forth of just expressing hope and future and love and what the world could be like through your eyes as you shared that and you pinned that together on paper and, and as God was speaking uh, through each of you to the other one about his purpose and his plan and you were sensitive and you were obedient, 
to follow the plan of God, even when it didn't probably make sense to the people around you, <laughs> you know, I could imagine. Yes. But, you know, many times the plan of God does not make sense. And so we have to be very sensitive to what we're hearing the Lord say, what we're hearing Him speak to us, and walk in obedience. It doesn't have to make sense. We just have to be obedient and respond according to what He is saying to us. And because you did that, I know many, many lives have already been touched, but are going to continue to be touched. We're going to see a multiplication of that. Mm -hmm. So will you share with me, um, do you take your dogs into the hospital as well, Jeremy? Uh, not Grace, but we do have a secondary dog that my daughters had worked with the company Freedom Fur that Gracie came from nice. to train as what we call an ambassador. Okay. Um, his name is Levi James. And... He has met congressmen, oh. he's met, uh, I think, Tim Scott and a few other mm -hmm. um, senators up in, up in D.C. Um, talking about the um, service dog access accessibility, nice. um, you, you can't imagine that even in this day and age that there are still people that don't recognize or understand what the service dog does for yes. an individual and uh, raising that awareness and making it more available for people to understand. Beautiful. So we, we use Levi for that. Um, not wonderful. so much Grace because she is my companion. <laughs> She's yours. And what a wonderful <laughs> companion you are, Grace. And we just thank you for being with us today too. Isn't she amazing? So tell us, Jeremy, at what time did you realize it was a good time to be you? Uh, I would say after work, waking up from my surgery and realizing that, you know, I, I made that decision to stay that I knew that there was a greater path in my mm. life and I had to follow that path. Yes. Lindsay, how about you? When did you realize it was a good time to be you? I think I would say the same when um, I came back, when my spirit came back to my body. And I mean, I was only 12 years old, but wow. I knew the, the weight of what my destiny meant. Because even a couple of months after that, I had another near-death experience and I was able to call on what the Lord had promised yes. and say, this is, this is what it, you know, this is what it looks like. Amen. And you know, again, being numbers at the age of 12, 12 mm -hmm. represents ruling and reigning and government. And so he brought you back so you could do just that. Thank Amen. you guys so much for being a part of the show today. Miss Grace, I know it was a good time to be you when you got <laughs> connected with your owners and she just looked so happy and so mm -hmm. content. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a joy sharing this story with you. We hope that you feel inspired inspired and just empowered to go and do great things too. How about at the count of three? Let's tell them it's a good time to be you. One, two, three. It's, it's a, a good, good time, time to be you. you. To connect with Jeremy and Lindsay Loomis, just go to www.777initiatives.com. And remember, it's a good time to be you.